I'm going to take a look at some typography in Rise. This is a Rise course. I wanted to uh, add some styles for code highlighting and code samples. Not in this video, I ran into something else I wanted to look at first. Someone in the forum wanted to change the font of their menu, the sidebar menu system in Rise. And it does not pick up the fonts that you may have specified. It's actually using this variable font family UI. That's Lotto. Did you look at that? Yeah, there's a few more blemishes on the car. The oh car, my gosh, the just car, look at the it. The car is not perfect. Just look at it. <laughs> is Lotto part of your branding guidelines? Probably not. So let's let's see how, how can we get the menu system to pick up the font that we've specified. And I think I know why it always uses Lotto. We'll, we'll get to that. And just using the debugger here, various ways to debug uh, the fonts. If you look up font family, you'll see it's loading Lotto. And you can actually change it. This is my, my body font. So my body font is inter, I-N-T-E-R. Uh, I like that font. It's got a lot of different weights and you can kind of debug and play around with fonts in the in the debugger. But let's let's look at the menu and actually look let's look at the title real quick. Interesting thing. May tree is the font I've specified as all my headings. And it gets picked up in the title there. Font family head, that's the variable that Rise is using. And they force you 900 weight font, which Matri doesn't have 900, so it's going to pick up, I believe, the six or 700 weight. Unfortunately, sometimes Rise forces a, a font weight on you that you can't change unless you do some some edits like what what we're about to do. Uh, but anyway, back to our our issue at hand, our menu sidebar navigation. We want to change that font and here's it's pulling from font family ui we, we're, i'm going to make a new a new style here and here just looking at the the dot classic that is the default rise theme it's the theme called rise but they call it classic in the in the code in case you ever see classic that's the default theme so I'm going to copy this style and I'm going to start changing. I'm going to try to put in our, our body font here and I'm going to make it a little more uh, specific div.classic. That's the, the wrapper class, classic font family var. Now I'm going to tap into all our variables. These come from rise. I'm just going to change it to font family body which is enter instead of the head or the UI and now you can see now that I've added that it's changing that that font in our navigation I can easily see turn it on and off I can see it's changing the font and also the weight I'm not sure I like that really thick weight so what we can also do is let's change that weight. Now what I'm realizing here, that weight rises specify that weight on the LI or the A element. So I'm just going to make a much more specific rule here. Hooking on to that A element. It's a, just a link element. And I'm going to specify font weight 100, which is really light. Enter like I said, has a lot of different weights. So now we can fine tune, get that weight we wanted. Uh, you can play around with the different weights. And I think that's why Rise locks you into Lotto because they know that the font and the weight they've specified looks good at a very small size. It doesn't look too thick or too light. It, it looks pretty good. Problem is it just doesn't match our, our brand guidelines. So that's why we're gonna change. to uh, our enter and this looks like a good weight 400 it's good enough for me enter also has like a really thick 
eight or nine hundred weight. Now I'm going to copy this and click on that, and it'll show me exactly what I was debugging. Easier to copy over. Now, if we look, find my course. This is if we're just adding one piece of CSS. Open up that index file in your SCORM or web content. And now there's a whole whole bunch of stuff in here. I'm going to find the div called app. That That is where all the rise course goes. There's a, a bunch of weird code above and below. I'm not even sure what some of this stuff is. Probably a lot of, a lot of JavaScript. But anyway when I find that app I'm just gonna make a new style and I'm just gonna paste it in it doesn't need to be in the head of the document I can put it directly above the app so if there's any kind of error in my code it's not gonna affect the loading of the page now if I uh, refresh here and I added that style with the red background I just wanted to make sure uh, that I could see my changes were showing up take out that red background and now we've got enter it's loading my font that I've specified and rise in the menu system now I'm gonna show you a better way to include custom CSS especially if you have a lot of CSS maybe you got images your own custom fonts any kind of stuff you're adding I'm gonna show you a different way we're gonna put all that stuff into a folder in our scorn package so if I go back here's my course find that index file I'm gonna make a new folder called theme now if you go to my site theme360.com go to any one of the theme components at the bottom I give you this blank file this is a, just a CSS file completely blank I'm gonna put it in my course in that folder I just created called theme custom.css and then now I'm gonna make a link from that index file so instead of that inline CSS I'm just gonna link to my folder called theme and that file called custom.css this way everyone in my organization if they're editing it they're gonna know oh here's the custom folder so you can easily copy and paste it to other courses cuz let's face it you're gonna have edits you're gonna have to copy this code to another course and uh, maybe new courses uh, down the line and good idea to leave a little little commenting uh, just because again if someone else from your organization is looking at what you've done they're gonna want to know so just leave a little comment like that hit refresh cross your fingers and looks like everything's working let me debug it again I can see yep it's coming from custom dot CSS so looks like everything's working okay we got one other typography issue to look at the font that gets picked up in the button stack it's the heading font doesn't make any sense because it looks correct on the continue buttons my heading font is actually a serif font a tree but that's wrong I, I posted about this months and months ago in the forum I, I guess it's just kind of an open issue all the entire button stack is picking up the heading font but here's uh, another little little fix we can do if typography is important to your organization and I realize it's probably not a big deal to most organizations if you have sophisticated branding requirements your marketing manager may be interested in this but if no one's looking at your fonts with a fine tooth comb they're not going to notice it so okay so we have some 
some CSS here looks like it's working changing again back to our correct uh, font variable okay starting to look good now I noticed the actual buttons are still picking up my heading font which I, I do not want that so the resulting CSS I'm just gonna combo these two these two styles and this is gonna even out all the fonts in my in my button stack and I'll, I'll provide the uh, the code here so if you're adding your own CSS uh, I just saved you a bunch of work now that I made that external file I can put all of my CSS in that one file and next time I download this course or another course I can just copy that theme folder it makes it much easier to copy and paste the whole folder instead of editing individual files I just need to add that link from the index to the custom CSS file <laughs> 